Hello everyone, how you doing? I hope you're all doing really, really well today. I'm Lindsay, your host of the Heavy Metal Journal and writer for Lamb Goat and the Moshville Times. And I'm back with New Metal Monday, where I talk about my favourite new releases of the week. And here I was thinking that it was starting to slow down now, we're coming to the end of the year. I only had three releases to talk about last week, but no, I have five today. Yes, I have another five brand new albums that I want to talk about. But before I begin, as always, check out the description box below where you will find a Spotify playlist link, which will feature every single album that I talk about on my New Metal Monday videos. So if you do use Spotify, make sure to follow that link because I do update that playlist every single Monday as soon as these videos go live. But if you don't use Spotify, don't worry, because I will also be including the band's Bandcamp links or their YouTube channels below just so you can find the music that I'm talking about as easily as possible. But like I said, I have five brand new albums that I want to talk about, so let's get on with it. Okay, so the very first album I want to talk about is Mulder with Catastrophic Reconfiguration. And this is the third studio album from the US old school death metal band. Now, if you want a full in-depth review which breaks down the entire album track by track in a lot more detail, I did write one for Moshville Times, which I will include in the description box below. But basically, this is old school horror and gore themed death metal and it has huge obituary and entombed vibes so if you like that kind of style of old school death metal with an underpinning of groove definitely check this one out flying solos really muscular riffs chugging bass lines blast beats everywhere the drums in this are absolutely insane and the vocal style is very raw very rasping and very venomous and it alternates between that full steam ahead ferocious riffage and those kind of mid-tempo groovy stompy stomps as well but underneath all of that there is this very disgusting vile groovy horror themed old school death metal element and honestly it is so fun to listen to if you are a fan of obituary or entombed even if you like early death or autopsy this one is definitely for you but i like my old school death metal to be in your face no nonsense absolutely insane but with that undertone of groove and if you're the same you'll definitely want to check that one out but like i said i wrote a full review breaking the album down track by track for moshville times so if you want more detail check that out below but i absolutely loved this record and it was really fun to listen to okay so next up on my list this album completely destroyed me and it has found its way onto my top 40 albums of 2024 and it's completely wrecked my list i thought i was getting on top of my list for this year but this one completely wrecked it so i'm gonna have to revisit the whole thing again but that's disparaged with down the heavens and this is the fifth studio album from the swiss progressive melodic death metal band now first of all can we just talk about this artwork because that artwork is amazing it is so ridiculously evil looking but really beautiful at the same time and that's exactly what you get in this record it is very much on the heavier side of the melodic death metal subgenre yes there's synths there's really eerie ethereal synths but that's not the focal point and that's not what makes the atmosphere on this record. Of course, the synths and the keyboards add to that atmosphere, but it's really the guitars that make the atmosphere in this record. It's an incredibly guitar driven album, so you can expect a lot of flying solos and really intricate muscular riffs. And it's just an absolute monster of a record at just over an hour long but the vocal style is very guttural with the odd clean here and there as well the drums are both rhythmical and absolutely devastating and the bass lines are really cool in this as well but those synths do add an eerie kind of haunting touch to the entire record and the progressive moments are very smooth and clean as well but the thing i really like the most like i've already said is the fact that the guitars are incredibly melodic but very ferocious at at the same time and it does lie on the heavier side of the melodic death metal subgenre but it's an incredibly captivating record that really just hooks you in and there's something very rousing and opulent but incredibly devastating at the same time so if you are a fan of last year's sulfur aeon or if you are a fan of this ending early in flames or a little bit of at the gates this one is definitely for you but this album completely 
destroyed me and I cannot get enough of it. It is evil, it's ominous, it's ridiculously heavy, but it's really addictive and melodic at the same time. Check it out, do not sleep on this one. Okay, so next up on my list, I have Yoth Iria with Blazing Inferno, and this is the third studio album from the Hellenic Melodic Black Metal Band. Now, there's something about black metal that comes from Greece that I absolutely love, and I always gravitate towards that sound. That classic Hellenic kind of sound is something that really speaks to my soul. It's very dark, it's very ominous, but it's incredibly addictive at the same time, and that's exactly what you you get from this record. Now this band is created by Jim Mutilator who was the ex-bassist of Rotten Christ and Varathron so that's exactly the kind of sound you're going to be getting on this record. It's a very ominous, evil, dark record but there's something very addictive about it. The guitar work in this is absolutely incredible. The riffs are incredibly intricate and the solos are just flying everywhere. The drums are thunderous, the blast beats in this are absolutely insane and it's got some really cool chugging rhythmical bass lines to it as well. But it's the vocal style in this that alternates that I really really enjoy. There's some spoken word moments and there's also those really guttural growls and screams and honestly it just sounds like it's coming from the depths of hell itself but the melodies and the harmonies in this are incredibly rich as well and there's just something very very enticing about this record so if you are a fan of the likes of Rotten Christ, Varathron, Necromantia or if you even enjoyed last week's Lysistrata you're definitely going to want to get onto this I absolutely love everything about melodic black metal that comes from Greece it has that very prominent sound about it and that is certainly pepper throughout this entire record and it's just such a joy to listen to. Loved it, definitely check this one out. Okay so next up are two bands that kind of showcase the other end of the metal scale that I really enjoy that kind of incorporates a lot of electronica and synth elements as the focal point throughout the music and the very first band is The Browning with Omni and this is the sixth studio album from the symphonic rave deathcore metal band. Now hear me out on this, do not be put off by the term rave because it works. It is so ridiculously catchy and the band themselves have categorized themselves as rave metal on Spotify at least. Now this band did feature in my top 10 albums of 2022. I think it would have been the third place if I remember rightly and I describe this as music to play the video game Doom 2. It's very foreboding, incredibly dark and crushing and it has this very very dense dark electronica kind of element to it as well. It's very industrial but don't get me wrong because the guitars and the drums in this are ridiculously heavy. The guttural vocals are so powerful and it's just incredibly addictive to listen to. But not only that, the band The Defect and Nick Nocturnal make their appearance on the album as well, which adds another dynamic layer to the guitar work especially. And there's just something very evil and foreboding about this record, but it is so catchy. It has ridiculous breakdowns. This is a proper face melter of a record. And it goes between that really fast paced, furious, in your face, dense, heavy death metal deathcore but it also has a lot of those really cool intertwined electronica industrial moments throughout it as well not to mention the groove laden stompy stomps as well we all know that i love those mid-tempo stomps that get you moving this has everything give it a chance it is incredibly addictive very rich but incredibly heavy at the same time. So if you are a fan of the likes of Fit for a King, 1056, Combi Christ or Born of Osiris, you're definitely going to want to get onto this but I highly recommend this band. This band go under the radar way too much for my liking and I absolutely adore them. They need more love. Definitely check it out. It's very heavy, very industrial, very catchy. 
do not sleep on this one. Okay, so last up on my list, but certainly by no means least, I have Make Them Suffer with their self-titled album. And this is Symphonic Deathcore Metalcore from the US, and it's their sixth studio album. Now, I'm going to be honest, I didn't anticipate enjoying this album as much as I did, because I am ridiculously fussy when it comes to deathcore and metalcore. Usually it has all of the elements that I enjoy in metal, but normally I kind of get put off by it. I'm not entirely sure what it is, because it normally doesn't catch my attention all that well. This one, however, is incredibly multi-layered and dynamic and it really did hook my attention and it continues to do so. It's got a lot of ridiculous breakdowns in this. The rhythm and the melody is incredibly rich and enticing and the different vocal styles throughout really catches your attention as well. So you've got the main guttural vocals, which are very deep, powerful screams and roars. You've also got the occasional fry scream and the occasional clean, but you've also got the clean vocals from their new keyboardist, Alex Reed, and she is incredibly talented. So her vocal style is very soft, very ethereal, but then you've also got her screams in the background as well, which just adds that extra layer of heaviness. Plus her keyboard skills and her synths are phenomenal in this. Blast beats everywhere, cool riffs, flying solos. This is an incredibly heavy record. Now, if you do want a full detailed breakdown of this record, I did write another review for Moshville Times. Again, this will be linked in the description box below. But I really enjoyed this. And as somebody who doesn't really enjoy deathcore and metalcore all that often, that means a huge deal. It's very much on the heavier side of that subgenre. But it's got lots of really cool layers and elements throughout it as well. The synths and the electronica, are incredibly enticing too and it does lean more on the melodic and the harmony side of things rather than the browning which is very much the heavier side of things but check this one out i really really enjoyed this especially if you are a fan of the likes of carnifex shadow of intent or bleeding through this was a really enjoyable record to listen to definitely check this one out and that's it for this week's very rambly New Metal Monday. Once again, comment down below to let me know what you think of today's records. And if there's anything that you would like to recommend, let me know and I will definitely get that added to my list. I only have maybe two more New Metal Monday videos to come and then I've got a special bonus video and then we will be moving on to my top 40 albums of 2024 which will be four separate videos and then I will hopefully have my Bandits of 2024 at the end so that's what seven eight new videos that are due to come before the end of the year but thank you so so much I really appreciate your support as always and I will see you very soon in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.